Hello and welcome to part two of the Mid Table and Up podcast. If you missed part one, it's currently available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify and YouTube. You can find it through our Instagram, Twitter and Facebook below. We hope you enjoy part two of the podcast. Seven it is a game at the end of the 9 season where Ipswich beat Norwich three goals to two, which effectively sent Norwich into League One at the time. And it Were was you a there? Game. I was there. Well, of course he was there. Otherwise, he wouldn't be able to put it on the list, Matt. Yeah, there's a couple I would have wanted to put on the list. It's a big isn't it? It was. But it wasn't because it didn't do anything for us. It really yeah, didn't. Yeah, yeah. But it didn't, we, we were mid table. But it's a derby. Hang on, qu- Simon. Uh, one quick question before you continue. Was that the last time you beat Norwich? I was coming on to that, yes, it, it was the it last was. time we beat Norwich, yes. And I think that's partly why it's not as high as, as high as it would be. Yeah. Because it's twinged with a bit of, can't beat those fuckers in 10 or 11 years now, oh my God. But it was a good game, and Giovanni Dos Santos scored for us. Wow, that's a fucking name I didn't think I'd ever hear again. Yeah, he was on loan from Tottenham at the time. He was brilliant for us. Mm. I wish we could have signed him permanently, but obviously he was on ridiculous money. Another name in that game. Do you remember John Stead? You might remember him. Yeah. Forever. George, you might remember John Stead. He scored in that game as well. Along with Alan Quinn. I don't know if you remember Alan Quinn. His brother played as well, Stephen. No. But he, he scored in that game. He was shit for us as well. So you got a couple of journeymen and uh, like Premier League reject in the end. Um, the other thing about that game, it was so... Last, I can't remember if it was last week or the week before, I, t- I told that story about Roy, meeting Roy Keane. Yeah. And that was the game that I did my match report on to get that prize. Oh, that's special. Yeah. So again, it, it kind of, that game sticks in my head for that reason. Because I remember like, after the game, I watched the highlights and made sure I like, got all the players right. And I even watched the highlights on the Norwich side because they were different from the Ipswich highlights to make sure that I, got, I captured all the angles. Doing your homework. That's good stuff. Yeah. Good, good memories from that regard in terms of winning the competition and... It was good to relegate Norwich. That was that did feel that was a good experience. <laughs> I mean, I don't think they were mathematically relegated, but it was a game they had to win, and yeah. we beat them three three two. And we were three one up. Like they scored a last minute penalty. It should have been much more comfortable than it than it looked. Three two sounds like it was quite close. It wasn't that close, but yeah. As I say, the the issue for me is that that's the last derby win. 11 years it's it's just it's such a damning statistic. To be fair though, like a good, I'd say. Roughly close to half of those years, though, you've not been in the same division. Yeah, that's still like still like 12 games, though. Mm, I suppose so, yeah. It, it, it sounds all right. I tried to salvage it for you there, mate, but you know... It's... Yeah, mate, just just give it a move on. But I think this, that shows the issues that I've had doing my list, that a game like that is one of my better ones. Yeah, definitely. Definitely, mate. So, George, what about you? So, my number seven, and... This is on my list pretty much purely because of the historical side of it. So I have gone for the England under 21s free versus the Italy Italy under 21s free. So like it was free all the game. And it was the first ever game at the new Wembley. I was there. I've still got my ticket from the day uh, in 2007. And it was just, you know what? It was a great game. It was a really great game to be fair. And again, it was one of those, because it was a friendly, again, you don't really go into it with, that, with any anxiety because you, you kind of just want to see a good game. It was also an under 21 game, which also doesn't come with that much yeah, anxiety. Count. As I said, it felt like even, uh, I, was, I would have been 11 going on 12 at that point. And just being there, like it felt... Like going to Wembley for the first time and it being the first ever game at the new Wembley for me, it was just so exciting. Like I felt like I was part of history in a way. And yeah, as I said, my first experience with with, with the new Wembley, ever going to Wembley, only being 11, it was just brilliant. And I've been doing some looking into that game actually because it being so long ago and me being so young at the time, I remembered the score but a lot of the details and that I kind of like forgotten about a little bit. Did ben- Bentley score a free kick? Yes, I he did. Remember? Yes, he did. And I was going to say, I've actually got 
the the squad from that game. Oh, yeah. this will be interesting. There are some there are some names in that squad that obviously at the time that obviously at the time I would have probably known next to nothing about apart from the odd couple. So I'm just going to rattle off a few names here. Uh, Agbon Lahore played yeah. in that game. Wayne Routledge. Okay. David Bentley. Yeah. Nigel Rio Coca was captain in midfield. He played for us. He played for us at that point. I know, but he was captain in the under-21 tournament, I think, the year after. Well, the thing is, right, because I know we did the thing on Wasted the episode on Wasted Potential very early on now, uh, that, that was in terms of the podcast. Yeah. And he was kind of one that I forgot about because it was so long ago and I was so young that people kind of expected big things of Nigel Rio Coca. He was captain for us as well. And he was only like... 21 or something daft. And then his career ended on loan at Ipswich. Did he really? I didn't know that. Very late on in his career was at Ipswich and he oh, was wow. absolute dog shit. Well, he went to Villa from us and he did okay there until like the last couple of seasons he was, and then it just went downhill and he, yeah, it was like, ended up being basically, I don't want to say nothing player, but kind of how he ended really. I, say, I think that's probably a fair enough description. Yeah, there was also Kieran Richardson, Leighton Baines, Gary Cahill, Anton oh. Ferdinand, oh, yeah, Lee Camp, uh, Liam Rosinia, and then on the bench, right, we've got two goalkeepers, Ben Ornwick and Joe Hart. Joe Hart was on the bench, and then we had Liam Ridgewell, Justin Hoyt, Lee Catamol. Bloody Lee Catamol was. I, I can't. I can't imagine Lee Catamol ever being younger than like thirty-five. <laughs> he was probably still kicking lumps out of everyone else I on know, the pitch. I know. Lee Catamol. But I think he's also he's on the bench, mate. Yeah, I, I know. He's uh, also part of that squad that got to the under twenty one final that got absolutely wrecked by Germany. Germany, I'm yeah. Sure he's part of that squad as well. Yeah, Euros. Uh, Euros. And, and mate, honestly, yeah. I'm still going. I'm still going here. So then after that, Tom Huddleston, again, qu- quite an average footballer, really. James Milner. Yeah, I'd have thought Milner would have been on there because he had about 400 under 21 caps. And, and to be fair to Milner, he's out of all these players, he's had the best career by a mile, I would say. And then Ashley Young, Matt Derbyshire, and Cameron Jerome. <laughs> that, that's the rest of the squad for that game. Matt, Matt Derbyshire was a player that so many people thought was going to... I remember him being well, like... He came on and scored in that game. Like, I remember people just thought he was going to be like the next big centre forward. And he his career fell by the wayside very quickly, mm. didn't it? Matt Derbyshire, you probably wouldn't even have heard of him. Never heard of him. Since he was a black... Would he have been a black man at that time? I can't remember. I can't remember now, mate. Stuart Pearce was the manager. Yeah, I mean... Yeah. Stuart Pearce is a manager of England's youth. I mean, that's... So it says... I mean, it's A.D. Boothroyd now, so it's not much better these days, to be honest with you, so... Yeah, very true. Was, was there any issues with the stadium that day? Because I remember... Because it was only half full, wasn't it? I, yeah, I, it wasn't... It wasn't a full stadium. It wasn't a full stadium, and... Oh, I can't remember how much the tickets cost. I think it says the price on the ticket. Um, but yeah, I've still got that in my drawer at home. Like, I've kept that. Well, it's, it's an iconic game. Right? In with the pants. Next next to a signed picture of Emma Watson. Yeah, that, yeah, it's as treasured as my picture of Emma Watson, for sure. Sticks together. Um, <laughs> moving on. That's the second time you made that joke. <laughs> to be fair, I'll give it to Matt. That's still funny. It, yeah, it's, it's never not funny. It's May, funny. I, Matt, I, you're number six. Let's move on quickly. <laughs> my number six. Uh, my Europa League spot is a team. both teams on definitely not looking like they get in the Europa League this season. And it is Arsenal versus West Ham uh, away. This was an experience I went to with George. Oh, my God. Uh, how have you put in so many of these like horrible defeats on here? I mean, I say that you have supported West Ham for the last three years, so I imagine there's not many wins. I think we lost 4-1. Yeah, we did lose 4-1. And it's simply on here because it's my first away experience. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so that was it. Uh, it. It just sticks in my mind. It's with my mate George. We went away at Arsenal. We got annihilated. I think you need to get some more away experiences. Uh, yeah, no, I agree. <laughs> to be fair, though, it's funny that... Matt, was that your only away game? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I was going to say. It, I mean, oh, mate. Yeah, at least at least your your win to loss ratio, I suppose. Like, it's great. It's, I've only yeah. lost one. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, but to be fair, Simon, you've been to what fifteen, and you've only seen one win. Yeah, that's just. But that's just. Good I've I've lost one and seen one. You've 
seen. I've seen a few draws, but we just don't win many. Yeah. You know what was quite funny about that game, though, Matt? Right. It was the first game after it was announced that Arsene Wenger was going to be leaving at the end of the season. Yes, of course. Yeah. 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 So we got there, and, and um... Arsene Wenger was on the cover of the program. Yeah, Arsene Wenger was on the cover of the program. We were singing Arsene Wenger, he's leaving because you're shit. To be fair, yeah, the, the away fans were fucking great that day. Yeah, it the, was, the away fans yeah. were okay. uh, great. And um, furthermore, George, we um, you got a picture with uh, James Collins. I did. Yeah, I met James Collins that day. Yeah. It was great. He was just sat in he the away fans. He was fantastic. He was mate, great mate, you should, mate, you should have come over and got a picture with me, man. You should have come over and got a picture with me. Yeah, I should have. I, I, and I'm open to admitting this I am like a huge fanboy I've got as I said I've got a fucking picture of Emma Watson in my wardrobe from when I wrote a fan it's mail it's not when I was your 10. wardrobe it's your pants drawer get the fuck <laughs> out of here but but yeah I am a fanboy and then everyone just started singing there's only one ginger pele one ginger pele and then I was like James Collins is an absolute hero I was like I've got to go get a photo with him and yeah it was great legend no absolutely yeah cracker of a game but but I think your point there about away fans is, is good as like even when you lose it's still fun, fun. yeah because I, I, I don't remember us losing up until the last 10 minutes of that game we were in it, it that we went 1-0 down and then we pulled it back to one all, and deservedly so. And then when we got it back to one all, we then went back on the defensive and then conceded a second and then we conceded a third and a fourth. So the fans were rightly, you know, so enthusiastic, so on top of it because we thought we could, you know, nick something here. And it, it, yeah. But, 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 I think but Simon's right. I think, I think the point I was going to say is like, when you're in a home ground that's losing... The atmosphere is dreadful. Yeah. Yeah. When you're in an away end that's losing, the atmosphere is still very good. I've been to a lot of games when you're in the away end, and it's still quite fun even if you're behind, because, as I say, it's the diehard. So they... I, cause the one I really remember, I watched Ipswich lose 7-0 away at Chelsea in the FA Cup, and it was the same week we were playing Arsenal in the League Cup. And the away fans, 7-0 behind, were singing, bring on the Arsenal. <laughs> and it's just that kind of I don't know the atmosphere of away. yeah is, that's great isn't it it's just that brilliant great. it's just that kind of callous humour you're like well we might as, we're losing we might as well make the day of it and I think Definitely. that's the thing yeah that's the thing it's it's just an attitude thing and, and, and you know I don't want to wear but like you said they're diehard they're, they're, they're diehard supporters so so yeah that's my uh, number six nice one so your Europa League spot Simon who makes your number six so my Europa League spot is again not necessarily for the game itself the game itself is a largely a non-event but Ipswich beat Birmingham by a single goal 1-0 and it sticks in my mind because it was the first match that I did commentary from the press box I know you alluded to it before the game but for Hospital Radio and it was just incredible being in the in the press box for the first time and you come in and you see like so you see Tony Cotty was just sat there like for Sky Sports you're like bloody hell like yeah. legends of the game I remember I walked up to the press box and Matt Holland, who's absolutely a Ipswich legend, like mm. captain for years, and he's just sat opposite Mick Mills, who's England and Ipswich captain. He's sat in front of me and just like walking up, be like, "How am I here with all these people? Like proper football yeah. pundits, proper football people." Being in and in amongst them was was great. I was just super nervous as well. I got there like an hour and a half before kick off. Like mm. I was just like, I need to need to get there and get settled and and. Yeah, it was just a great day. Obviously, it helps when you win as well. What I really remember, we played Cheltenham in pre-season friendly the week before and we lost 6-1. They were League 1 and we were in the Championship at that time. Fucking hell. So everyone was like, this is going to be absolutely like awful. Like, we are yeah. so bad. Um, and then obviously we... And I remember Mick McCarthy talking about it after the game. It's like, I think Tom Credit's got a goal to management. <laughs> for, for putting that one out. Um, so, yeah, and, and that was what I was going to talk about. Like, so going to the press conference after the game is obviously something that that's what proper football pundit, pundits and commentators do. And mm. Harry Redknapp was the manager of Birmingham as well. So, like, two top-class managers at that time and owned McCarthy's career after he left it, which has largely gone by the wayside. But, um, but at that point, it was two kind of top-class managers who had bags of experience. And I was just in the same room as them, and that was completely surreal. It's... <laughs> still a bit surreal now when I do it yeah. but um, yeah I bet definitely uh, obviously Covid has put a bit of a stop to that but it's um, 
yeah, so that's why it's in there. It was just yeah, crack up. It was a huge, huge event for me, and I was I'm super proud of. No, you should be, mate. Yeah, you should be. It's not everyone Absolutely. that gets to commentate on their team. I think that's the thing. It's like I could do it for anybody, but it's the team that I love more than yeah. anything in the yeah. world. And yeah, just, Absolutely. Just a great day, and I'm glad I can carry on doing it. We'll do it for as long as I can. Don't blame Absolutely. me, mate. Don't blame me, mate. Keep going as long as you can. That's what I say. Strolling into my number six then. Yeah. So this is the oldest game on my list, and it's the oldest game because it's my first ever game. It was West Ham Free Sunderland Nil, April 2002. And Blimey. I know, and, and yeah, to be fair, like, I was, I would have been six, yeah, I was six going on seven at the time, and it was just, it, it kind of surreal, I, I don't remember a great amount of detail, because I was just, you know, that young, but I still remember that, being in the stadium for the first time, singing bubbles, going on the journey, and, and, and as I said, not, like, in great depths and great details, I had to look up the goal scorers again, but yeah. funny enough, you know what's really... Because as I said, we won that game 3-0. What I didn't need to look up was the fact that in that game, Paolo Di Canio had a goal ruled off for, for offside, uh, which would have made the game 4-0 at that point. So the game was already dead. But for some reason, that stuck in my mind more than the players that actually scored in the game. <laughs> uh, maybe because it's Paolo Di Canio, I don't know. But yeah, Trevor Sinclair, Steve Lomas and Jermaine Defoe scored in that game. And 3-0, my first taste of Upton Park. Little was I to know that, say, seven months, eight months later, at uh, Christmas, I'm then getting a half-season ticket for the rest of the season. And then after that, I'd have a season ticket every year up until the end of the tw- 2018 season. And, yeah, it was just, you know, it was kind of probably the perfect introduction to a football club. It's nice to get a win in your first game because you know had we lost being six years old at the time I might have been like oh I don't know if I ever want to go back or something you know I could tell you the story of my first game was okay we, we won the game uh, we won 2-1 two, two, against Coventry but we were sat directly under the away fans and I was five so this is uh, I think it was April 2001 mm. I didn't look it up but I, this is what I remember of the day I hated it yeah, I couldn't stand really. It. We were sat under this brummy lot going sky blue army like yeah. on yeah. fucking repeat for ninety minutes. I sat there with my hood up. Yeah. I was cold. I hated it. Yeah, and I tried to stay away from Birmingham at the best of times. So let alone them coming <laughs> to you. Uh, yeah, so I, I hated it. But apparently, I think my mum told me that we we went up like we wouldn't have gone back. My sister really enjoyed it. So from then on, like shout out. Shit. Shout out, Sarah. Shout out, Sarah. Yeah. Um, so that was the main reason we went back, and good job we did because it's yeah. well. You're yeah, just a little actually. bit into football now. Yeah, only a little bit. Right. Not you're not a big football fan. No, no it's, it's fine. It's you know I can take you or leave you. <laughs> no, I, can't. I wish I could take you or leave it. It'd be much easier. <laughs> we we um, do have much more hair. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, mate, my hairline's doing fine, but I wouldn't have any greys in it. I don't think. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so anyway, but I think your point is valid, like obviously having that moment of your first game. Well, we'll, we'll talk about my first football game, but it's a couple couple of Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. And I also remember it because it was the first time I'd ever heard my dad swear. Like, my, my dad is, <laughs> is like the most mild-mannered person, was well, the most mild-mannered person you could ever hope to meet. And then he would go to Portman Road and he would be completely I, different. I can't, I can't remember, but I can't remember if it was Mike Dean or uh, Andre Mariner. I think it was Mike Dean, but they were talking that they, they were a supporter of, I can't remember what club. Well, Mike Dean's Tranmere, because I know, because they were in the playoffs. I think it might be Mike Dean. I can't remember. But I, I was listening to a podcast and um, he was talking about how he kind of, he said, like, he was basically talking about how nowadays he can't really go and support the team but how so much he misses just going there and just letting loose and shouting and screaming and I imagine he must get a lot of banter with the Tranmere fans yeah, yeah exactly so um... well it's, it's quite funny that Simon you mentioned your dad swearing because actually yeah that's another big thing that sticks in my mind from that game because 
obviously, like my dad has been going since oh, like the eighties, if not longer than that. Even he, he was at Wembley when we last won the FA Cup in nineteen eighty, and he would have been like seventeen at the time. Yeah, my, my dad was there in seventy eight when Ipswich won the FA Cup. So again, kind of goes the same same thing. It's in the blood. And my dad had been going there pretty much on his own since my granddad had died in 97. So at that point for five years on on his own. And it was really funny because obviously he was trying not to swear, but still swearing. And then by the time that I probably got to about 12 or 13, where he'd kept trying to not swear... He then, unless there was something really bad in the game, he basically managed to, like, stop himself from swearing altogether. Cured himself. I'd then kind of taken that mantle on and would be like, oh, fuck off, ref, you cunt. You're a waste of space (laughs) and this, that, the other. I've heard George abuse referees. It's not pretty. (laughs) (laughs) Whereas my dad would be, you know, going, oh, that's rubbish, absolute rubbish. The the thing is, at West Ham, I kind of... I kind of don't see the point of trying to hide them people from swear words because in that East End, it's like there's just <laughs> no know, way. Do you know what it is? It's it's just with football. If you love a team, there's like a demon that comes out of you, yeah. and mm. it, you you do genuinely turn into a, a different person. It, well, it's that tribal instinct, isn't it? Yeah, it's like, you turn into your own. Booga, yeah. I, I, personally, I love it because yeah. I think it's so raw and it's the best thing ever. Yeah, definitely. But yeah, that was my. Number six, my first ever game, Upton Park, West Ham Free, Sunderland Nil. Little six year old George. Yeah. Brilliant. Absolutely. Brilliant stuff. Moving swiftly on, number five. I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll go first. So, my number five was a very recent game. Uh, it was West Ham 2, Man United Nil. Um, oh, I've just got so many Man United fans living in London or around London. <laughs> Jesus Christ. They're like the plague. You can't get all, well. They're like coronavirus. You can't get away from it. Um, <laughs> That's so and, true. And Man United uh, fans are like the coronavirus. Matthew Lee, twenty twenty. Uh, fucking quote. <laughs> um, and it was brilliant to beat them. Uh, it was amazing because the home end was full, um, which works well, because all of the fans are in London. Um, but you know, it was, <laughs> yeah, they it was only live ten minutes away. Yeah, they only live five minutes down the road. Um, it was a great game. We won two 0 uh, fuck Man United that's what I kind of got to say great free kick from Aaron Cresswell who signed oh that was a brilliant free kick wasn't oh, it my, my boy, top bin my boy free Aaron. kick uh, and every time now like I always knew he had it in his locker but every time I see Aaron Cresswell walk up for a free kick this season I'm just like I'm just rubbing my hands I'm like yes but good left foot good left foot cracker that's my number five so my number five, and I don't think it's an overstatement to say this is probably the game where I fell in love with football truly and completely. If this is your number five, what's number one? The game like in terms of the game itself, yeah. this is just the the best game I've ever seen. And it was January two thousand and four. I was eight years old. Ipswich Town six, Crew Alexandra four. Nice double digits, double digits absolute belter and it, I think it's the most goals ever scored at Portman Road something like that it's crazy stuff yeah, like yeah, that yeah. and I know you mentioned him earlier scoring a great overhead kick in your game Dean Ashton was playing for Crew that day and yeah. looks up he's, <laughs> he scored scored as well um, he was very early in his career when he's playing for Crew but and the thing is it's a game I remembered anyway but we played Crew fairly recently I think it's like October time and the club put out the the highlights package for the mm. game and I'd forgotten how good some of the goals were in this game. Tommy Miller scores two absolute belters in it. Shefki Kuchi scores a great header. So the, the game goes, Town go 2-0 up. Crew pull it back 2 all. Goes 3-3. 3-2 up. And then 3-3. Oh. We then go 5-3 up. Back to 5-4. And then eventually Kanago wins it. I know Kuchi got, got the last goal and we win the game 6-4. And I, I talked before, I know I talked about Shefki Kuchi and I talked about that era of Ipswich. It it's the best football I've ever watched mm. as an Ipswich fan because it was rock and roll like the score could be anything you walk yeah. up the ground you roll the dice like we could it could be 7-5 like you just go up for the game and you're like we're going to score a bucket but we could concede shit tons as yeah. well and it was a really fun era to be a fan and the thing is the squad was built on no money because we just come out of administration and you think so Darren Bennett was in that team People like, so we talked about uh, Jim McGill and Tommy Miller, great players of that that era. That side should have got promoted. That's, and the other thing, this game was actually 
a promotion fixture, which I know you about crew now and you think about Ipswich now, but this was to go up to the Premier League to make the playoffs that year. Crew were that far up with Dean Ashton obviously leading line. So it was a very good crew side as well. So it was a big game. And it I just I, it just sticks in my head so clearly. I mean, when there's ten goals in a game, I mean how many I don't know if you've ever seen a game double digits, I don't know if you are George either. Don't think so. Not like um that. I'm honest, yeah, because since you've mentioned that, I've actually been trying to think of my highest scoring games that I've seen. Uh I think I might have seen a fire four somewhere once. I think maybe oh, definitely some four threes. Oh yeah. man, yeah. No, I, I like. I definitely have to go back and, and maybe look at some results. But I, oh yeah, definitely not mm. double digits. No, but, but no. so anyway, that's that's why it's there on my list. And as I say, it was a game. So I was eight years old. So I'd followed. Let's so say went to my first game when I was five. But I think it was a game. I was like. Football's amazing. Yeah. Like, this is a great game. It's, and it shows, like, when you have no keepers. <laughs> like, if you think about it, just remove the keepers from the game. It's much better. It's amazing. Well, no, because then it's just everyone just putting it in from the fucking halfway line then, isn't it? Yeah. It really stops being a contest, really, at that point, did it? This game had goalkeepers. They just didn't do very much. <laughs> Take the ball out of the net <laughs> six and four times, yeah. respectively. We should have won that game by more. Crew of... Black did very well to keep that that close, but as I say, mm. um, watching it back, and I was just like, Christ, some of these, like, we, we don't score goals like this anymore. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. great passing movement, ended with a good finish, you're like, yeah. And it, it as a child, you're like, oh my God, this is great. Like, end to end. Like, that is, that like, is pinnacle of entertainment. Though, yeah, isn't it? you're just yeah. like, I've played to watch this every time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've won, but it's been a great experience, like, even if we'd lost like 5-4, I know you don't ever want to lose, but it it's was a ga- good game. It's games like that that make the new nils were worthwhile. I've seen plenty of those. Yeah. <laughs> it's a bit. Oh, mate, I don't, I don't doubt that. I really so, don't. So, George? My number five. So, narrowly missing out on my Champions League spot. I have gone with my... Yeah, my favourite cup game I've ever seen West Ham play, and that was... West Ham four, Manchester United nil. So to put to put it into context, I'm going to tell a bit of a story here. This was the, this year was the year that we got relegated under Avram Grant. We won more cup games than we did league games that year. That is how piss poor we were that season. We finished dead bottom, and the game really should have been called off. And before even potentially being called off, there was a chance that I might have missed the game anyway because it was one of the few times I think I was actually sick like on a, because it was a midweek game. It was a Carling Cup game. And it was one of the few days that I was like actually off school sick. And that whole day, because it was like an eight o'clock kickoff, that whole day I was praying. I was like, please feel better. Please feel better by the evening so that I can, so that I can go to watch West Ham. I was like, I was. So basically you bunked off school and. No, to be fair, I I, I think I had been like actually sick. That's what they all say. That's what they all say. (laughs) No, I I mean, like, mate, it wouldn't have been worth me just bunking off that one day but to potentially have missed the the cup game. And it was the quarterfinal as well. So, we, you know, winner goes into the semifinal. So was that, when was that, 20... It was twenty. It was twenty. Yeah, it was twenty ten slash eleven season. Yeah, it was the same season that you played Arsenal in the semi final, and yeah. So that, that game may may or may not feature later on. Oh, okay. So I'll look forward. I'll potentially look forward to that then. And yeah, like I got. Thankfully, it got to about five o'clock or so, and I'd had some toast. I had some water. I felt I felt a bit better, a bit more like normal, and. Again, to be under no illusion, the day it was freezing, it was snowing, and I remember being in the car on the way to the game, and the referee, I can't remember who the referee was, but the referee had phoned TalkSport to tell, like, he'd already notified the officials, you know, like, the official people or whoever, but he actually called TalkSport to say, yeah, I'm stuck in traffic, they might have to get the fourth official to be the referee tonight, because... It, it was just a nightmare. We had to leave mm. extra early to try and get there because of the snow and the conditions. And Scott Parker was our hero and saviour that like that season and the year before. Say, as we would have been we would have been relegated the year before if not for Scott Parker. And he was injured for that game. And we had such little depth that we had to play right back Jonathan Spector in his place instead. And 
to be under no illusion, Jonathan Spector was dreadful for us at right back. So going into that game, you're thinking, fuck playing him in midfield. And Man United went on to win the title that season. And though they weren't playing their complete full strength team, it was around the time that Rooney had thrown a bit of a strop and was aiming for a bigger contract. They still had like Hernandez, Giggs, Park, play, you know, players that, that, you know, they should have wiped the floor with us regardless of the team they put out that night. And we won the game 4-0. It was snow. Jonathan Spector scored two goals from midfield and <laughs> ran the game, despite the fact that other than, after, it was dreadful every other time after that. Dreadful for us. But that one game... You should have played in midfield, clearly. Yeah, he, yeah, he was never a right back. And uh, funny enough, after that, we started playing him in midfield. <laughs> we still got relegated, but yeah, we started playing him in midfield. Colton Cole got a brace as well. And yeah, it was just an unbelievable night. You know, we were all singing, oh, you know, okay, sarah, sarah, we're going to Wembley. We didn't in the end because we screwed up the uh, second leg of the semi-final against Birmingham after beating them 2-1 at home. But it was just a sublime night that really, for so many reasons, you know, like like worst case scenario, or to say best case scenario, I could have not gone to that game and we'd have still won 4-0. But it could have, it really could have been called off. As I said, that the snow, like, even now, if you go back and look at the pictures, you can just see it's so heavy in the air and it almost makes it more magical. It it does. The fact that the game shouldn't have even took place. We had no right, really, to even win that game, given the, the, the two teams that were playing, let alone win it 4-0. And as I said, we, you know, we, we ended up getting relegated that season. It was really the one highlight of that year. And yeah, it was just it was just a great a great night. And as I said, it was a shame we couldn't go and get all the way to the final because Birmingham won it that year. So, you know, who knows what might have happened if we'd have just played that second leg properly. But yeah, you know, what will be will be. And and that, yeah, that's my that's my champions. Uh, so that's my Europa League spot. Number five, my favourite cup game, West Ham for Manchester United nil. So moving into the Champions League spots then, guys. So this is this is going to be the one you don't expect. It's Valencia versus Liverpool in 2002 Champions League. Oh, very nice. A very a very random one. Um, it was when I lived in Valencia when I was uh, a child, um, and it was my first football game I'd ever been to. My dad had managed. Obviously, um, we're not Liverpool supporters. The furthest thing from it. So we supported Valencia while we were there. And um, the the funny thing was is that we'd bought Valencia tickets and we turned up at the gate and they didn't want to let us in because they thought that we were, you know, like away fans. Yeah. Um, and there was a whole ruckus because we had to try and convince them living in Spain that we were there, like just because we're English. In the end, we got in and uh, yeah, and uh, Valencia ended up winning that game. 2-0. Any scorers? Who scored in the 2-0? Mate, if it, it, I had to do my research because I, I couldn't, if, in all honesty, I couldn't remember a lot about the game. The scorers... Uh, so, well, let, let me put it this way. So, um, they completely... Um, they, they lost the game, as I said, 2-0. There's Michael Owen uh, and uh, Milan Barros. Milan Barros. Good player. Yeah. They, they were both kept out of the starting lineup. Uh, in this game and it completely backfired um, Valencia just walked around the pitch from them for what I remember um, but for me it was it, it was the old Valencia stadium it was you know uh, a bowl um, and um, it was great uh, it was fantastic and it was it was what me I played a lot of football at the time and what really really made me interested yeah I was going to say actually was that a good introduction because obviously you didn't really start following football to the extent you do now until, say, uh, I don't know, like the, about 10 years or so ago, maybe a little bit later than that even. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, th- I thought it really, really was. I, th- I think I think it was a it was a good introduction. I think what happened was when, once I'd moved away, it was a kind of just a bit... I didn't really have the association for the Premier League that I did right. yeah. once I'd actually started to go with Stan. I hadn't gone to Upton Park since so I went to Upton Park after 2002 I went in 2004 2005 and then I hadn't really gone for the entirety of my childhood 
since until yeah. that final season until 2018 so i think i think that was really you know a really really interesting game and um, yeah an interesting point of football ah fair enough yeah no, fair enough mate that does sound that does sound good to be fair so number four for you then Simon who's making your Champions League spot so my number four is Ipswich Town 2 Middlesbrough nil. Uh, this was from must have been the 14-15 season the Boxing Day fixture which is obviously always a great fixture in the in the calendar yeah and this was second to be third in the table it was a massive game. The the club had done this like uh, ten pound ticket deal. Make sure the, the stands were yeah, absolutely yeah. packed to the rafters, and it was it was a brilliant game. And we absolutely dominated it from start to finish. Um, it's, I think it's one of the best performances I'd ever seen us at that point because we it was against a top of the league rival, and we were completely all over them from like minute one to minute ninety. Uh, Daryl Murphy scores the first goal. I think about twenty minutes in. A nice, nice finish but the, what I really remember is a second goal because the ball's played out to Teddy Bishop right hand side he whips in this cross and it's headed in by Jay Tab now I don't know if you remember Jay Tab George you might do it you might not yeah I, I don't I can't the say the name might ring a bell but he's five foot seven that's what I'm going <laughs> to say and he wins a towering header against Middlesbrough six foot one centre half sorry just for context Matt how tall are you are you taller than five foot seven? I'm five eight, yeah. Oh, okay, so, so that, yeah, that really is context me. then. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, so he wins his header against this massive centre back. It's a great header, bottom, like, back of the net. So I remember I turned to my sister just before, and I'm like, if we can nick another one, it was just before half time. And I went, if we can nick one before half time, because we, like, we deserved it. We deserved to be a couple of goals in front. I think we're going to win the game. And then obviously, Tab scores, and we win it 2 0. Um, and it, it's a great McCarthy quote after the game. Some one of the uh, journalists asked him, "So how tall is Jay Tab?" And he said, "Well, I put it this way: he's just walked under the table in a top hat, which is <laughs> classic McCarthy line there." Which was uh, yeah, and it was a, a great day. And it, well, that season, so it was my 18th birthday, uh, the August before. So I sponsored Paul Anderson as one of my birthday presents. So after the game, I, I met with Paul Anderson, who was a player in the game. I met Daryl Murphy. He scored in the game. He gave me a signed shirt as well. Oh, great stuff. It was Christmas. <laughs> usually oh. usually it's which ruined Christmas. This time they made it even better. Brilliant. And it was it was a season we made the playoffs as well. We fell away in the second half of the season. But that game really sticks with me because it was just... I don't want to over it, but we were... Their centre-back should have been sent off about three times as well. Mm. The, the referee bottled it, that one. Like, they pulled him off in the end before he got sent off. Um... <laughs> we just outplayed them for minute one and it's just I wish we could be back at that level which we're, we're not at the minute unfortunately um, but yeah seeing Jay Tab and what I'll tell you is Jay Tab after he finished playing football ended up becoming a jockey for a while what? so you talk about <laughs> you talk about like I talk about how short he was that kind of gives you an idea like this was not a big man mm. <laughs> Well, Matt, if you ever don't know what to do with your career, uh, that's a move, isn't it? it? It is a move, apart from I, I hate horses, so um, <laughs> oh, yeah, the, yeah, I would yeah. be much further just turning them all into glue. But um, What, yeah, horses? Yeah. yeah, mate. Just, you know, turn them all into glue. What do you mean, turn them all into glue? Why would you want to do that? Because their hooves are made from glue. That, that Yeah, that's, that's where glue comes from. That's, oh. where, do you, that's where glues are from, yeah. There we go. You learn something new every day. Did not know <laughs> Who says this podcast is an education? Whoosh. Exactly. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. All right then. My number four is I have gone with West Ham free Wigan two in the 2010 season. It was the game that effectively kept us up that year. Uh, what can I say? So obviously I alluded to Jonathan Spector earlier being absolutely useless for us so obviously about seven months or so before we beat Man United 4-0 Jonathan Spector scored an own goal within four minutes of the game <laughs> kicking off in <laughs> this game we came back made it 2-1 and then they pulled it back to 2-all and then Scotty Parker steps up with I don't know say about 10 minutes or so left and just drills one into the bottom corner from outside of the box and Upton Park erupted it was 
it was such a feeling of euphoria when that goal went in because mm. it, it was safety on a, on a platter at that point and you know, the, the reaction from Scott Parker on his face after scoring that goal you could see the passion in him it was a bit you know when Stuart Pearce scored the penalty for England in Euro 96 in the in the shootout to redeem himself from 1990 yeah. the facial expression on Scott Parker after scoring this goal is somewhat similar to that that's how much that goal meant that's how big it was and as I said, it saved us from relegation that year. And it, it's part of the reason why, even though like some of the fans get on Scott Parker's back because he went to Spurs after we were relegated the year later, but he was in the England squad at that point and Capello had made it clear he wasn't going to pick championship players and, and Spurs had got Champions League the year that we got relegated. So, it, you know, if they're going to come in for him from a career standpoint, it's a no-brainer, really. And he won Player of the Year for us the year that we did get relegated. Sorry, he won player. Of the- he won hammer of the year for us the-, the year we did get relegated. That was his third in a row. And he won the writer's player of the year that year. And yeah, it was just, it was just like peak Scott Parker for me. And I- yeah, I loved it. It was just, as I said, that euphoria. It's one of the most euphoric I've felt when a goal has gone in because it was safety. We needed that so desperately. And it was the man that was consistently saving us carrying us that had delivered it and and yeah it was just it was the it was the game that just got us over the line that's a natural high you can't get anywhere else is it apart from football yeah not not at all and and as i said like it it couldn't have come from a bit from like a better more deserving person at that point because yeah. he was that he scott parker was that team matt your number three my number three is something that no one will remember because it's a pretty insignificant game it's West Ham 1, Chelsea nil, And it was in the 2018-19 season. Um, it was in a season pretty unspectacular for us. Um, but the reason why... Was that not... Out, sorry, Matt. Was that not the 17-18 season? Just because... Oh, it could have been, yeah. Yeah, I think I was there that game. Arnautovic scored, didn't he? I could have... T- uh, have did did Arnautovic yeah. score in like the first minute and then we won the game 1-0? Yeah, I think it was that. So sorry, I, I yeah. think it was probably it probably was the seventeen eighteen season. But the reason it stands out to me so much a, a, a pretty boring one 0 Chelsea was shit. Um, but the reason the reason it stands out is because um, uh, I had it was the day before my Christmas party. Uh, so it was the day after my Christmas party, and I was hanging out my ass, and it was so bad that my dad went up there before I went up there. I got to the station and you know one of them days you're just moaning about everything yeah and I was I was like oh we're just gonna lose why am I bothering going up there it's a shit day my head hurts I had a chicken burger on the way up that I fucking threw on the ground by accident <laughs> it was a, it was just one of those days I shouldn't have fucking left the house it was yeah. awful mate and um I had a pint and I just wanted to die and uh, but yeah and then we ended up winning one nil and it was the most beautiful high off of what an awful morning was um, to get that one nil um, and to keep it through we didn't play particularly well Chelsea were just like I said no you know what though we des- uh, we I think we you're deserved that one nil yeah but- I think you're doing us a bit of a discredit there we deserve to win that game. But Chelsea were also really rubbish. They were poor, but, you know, like when you play bigger teams than you, you're only ever going to get results against them if there's a bit of both. Like you obviously have to play well, but you need them to also not play well because if they do play well when you play well, the chances are they'll still beat you. But yeah. no, you know what? I, I do remember that game actually. And it was really, I, it was really funny because I think Arnautovic scored in like a minute or so. And I want to say that was his first goal for the club as well, because it was under Moyes, first time round under Moyes, and, yeah. and Moyes was the one that really got him playing. And you know what was really great about that game is because behind us, there was two people that weren't there regularly. It wasn't like season ticket holders. But I think the mum, it was like a family of three, a mum, a daughter, and a son. And I think the mum and the daughter were like kind of neutral but the son was Chelsea and he must have been about 12 or 13 and the entire game the kid was just absolutely screwing and it was 
hilarious to listen to and you've just got this like little six-year-old girl the boy is like oh come like you know like no one's going to say anything because it was you know in the upper stand and whatever and and this 13 year old kid is like oh oh please come on chelsea just score and then you've just got this little six-year-old going they're not going to score west ham are going <laughs> to score <laughs> it was just <laughs> it was sibling, just really funny it was it, i was like it was kind of like watching a game but having something like Arsenal fan TV on at the same time. Like as it ah. was just, it was no, it was honestly class. And that's kind of why. So I'm like, not only is the game one, but I've had some full on like Arsenal fan TV grade entertainment going on at the same time behind me. It was absolutely hilarious. So yeah, no, I, I, that, that's a good game to have on your list, mate. I, as I said, I do think that was a really good game. I, I do think you were being a little bit harsh to us. We definitely deserve to win that game as much as Chelsea weren't quite at the races. Yeah, yeah. It, I, I can't remember us offering too much further than the one goal, though. But we were dreadful that season. And when we when you go a 1-0 up against Chelsea in minute one, of, of, you sit on that, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah of course, so... Uh... But yeah, no, no, no. Good shout, mate. As I said, I think that's. A, I think it was a really good game. And as I said, I've got. There's more than one reason for me to enjoy that game. So Absolutely. yeah. Um, so yeah, that was that was that was a really good shout, mate. So your automatic Champions League spot, Simon. Yeah, we already spoke about it. Uh, England to Croatia one. My number three spot, and it is only. West Ham's second defeat on this list. It's my only other defeat on this list other than the Burnley game. And it is the FA Cup final in 2006 at the Millennium, St- Millennium Stadium. I was there and it was my third year in a row going to that stadium. We'd won the previous year, the playoffs, lost in 2004. And yeah, I remember, funny enough, I, like on the way up to that game, my dad said to me, don't get used to this. You've been spoiled. Like we're not, we're not normally going to, you know, like Millennium yeah, Stadiums yeah. or Wembley every year. And ten-year-old me was like, "Oh, what are you talking about, Dad? Like, of course we are." Like, yeah. <laughs> didn't yeah. And that was the last time. I oh, don't no, one more. Dad, you got to save up for the uh, tickets to Portugal for the Champions League final. In a couple <laughs> yeah, of years. that was basically my kind of attitude. And obviously, the game itself, the FA Cup final, Liverpool three, West Ham three, Liverpool one on penalties. It's probably considered to be one of, if not the best FA Cup final since Certainly the turn of the century. Uh, you know, a great game. We went 2 new up in the first half. They pulled it back to 2 all before half time. And then Paul Koncheski, of all people, floats in a cross and it, it, it just goes into the top corner. Yeah, and we're 3-2 up. And, you know, if, if, any, if it was anyone other than Steven Gerrard on that day, we win that game 3-2. And we win, we win the FA Cup. But, you know, the ball goes out for a throw. And our right back on the day, Lionel Scaloni, he still gets a bit of stick from West Ham fans to this day because he should have just launched, once the ball went out, he should have just launched it into row Z. But he gave the ball back to Liverpool. They then take the throw. Gerard, you know, he shifts it and whack. It's just, yeah. I don't know how much blame you can associate when someone cracks in a 30 yard thunderbolt, to be honest. No, but if they just put the ball into row Z, it just it delays it, it wastes the clock, it, it it times it down. As I said, it is harsh. I'm not I'm not denying it, and I'm not gonna sit there and go, I hate the man forever. But when you know, when you're free to up in the final, ninety you know, like ninety-fourth minute at that, that point, whatever it was, and you, you know, you just wanna waste time, you know, get it get the game done. You don't give the ball back to them, do you? You don't. Um, uh, and yeah, it, you know, it is, it is what it was. It, or, you know, it happened. You know, we nearly scored in extra time, funny enough. We were really unlucky not to score in extra time from a chance. And then, yeah, penalties. We were just dreadful with our penalties, to be fair, and, and, and lost the game. But it was one of those things that was quite surreal because obviously we lost on penalties. And then I remember saying to my dad, oh, you know, like we've lost. Should we go home now? And my dad said, no, 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 no. You know, we, we've played a good game. We've come here today. Mm. You know, we, we, we weren't favourites, of course. Liverpool had won the Champions League the year before. Yeah. And my dad was like, no, the least we can do is, you know, like they're going to lift the trophy, you know, give them an, an applause. They deserve that. And a lot of the West Ham fans must have been of a similar mindset because in Steven Gerrard's autobiography, he, when he talks about that game, he actually praises the West Ham fans because he says in any other final he's been to that Liverpool have won, the away fan, like the other team's fans, are fucked off, like straight yeah. away. And he said, "No fair play to them for you know 
sticking around and, and applauding us because, you know, it was a hard fought game and and yeah, it was just as I said, it was just one of those one of those surreal games. Probably I would say probably the best goal I've ever seen live. I, I was going to ask you about that, actually. I was going to ask about the best goal I've ever seen live. It's one of the best goals I've ever seen. I think the importance factor just pr- probably does it because, you know, I've seen some other great goals. I say most of them have been scored against us, funnily enough. But, you know, I say that we, I've seen some cracking goals at West Ham. But, uh, but you know, Wayne Rooney scored against us from the halfway line. I was there for that game. And Andy Carroll scored that overhead kick against Palace I saw Payet score a free kick against Palace at Upton Park that was it was still one of the best free kicks I've ever seen as much as he is a snake and uh, uh, but yeah in so if you're going on how good the goal was and its importance that Gerard goal sadly for me and it's the it's the be- it's the best goal I've ever seen live for sure yeah it was Gerard's game wasn't it did, did he score t- Twice, he scored did. twice, yeah, yeah. He did score twice. And Gibral Cisse got the other, didn't he? Yeah, memory. yeah, he did. Yeah, Cisse got the other. Um, I think we scored for a Carragher own goal. And a lot of those, Dean A yeah, and yeah, that was quite common. And Dean Ashton scored after a rare Pepe Reina mistake. Well, I think you could argue you had two in that game. That Koncheski one, I still Yeah, and then yeah, Koncheski scored for a cross. So, yeah, it, it, it was what it, it, you know, again, the result wasn't what you want it to be as a West Ham fan, but it was, it was a great game and it's the only time I've been to an FA Cup final and, you know, we were so close to winning it. And as I said, you know, if if the ball goes to pretty much any other player, we win the game 3-2. That was back when Alan Pardew was considered a good manager as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, weird times. Well, you know what? That was our first year back in the Premier League. As I said, I'd seen us in the Millennium Stadium at the playoffs the year before and in 2004, but I didn't put those on. The, well, I didn't put the winning one on this list because I really don't remember that game much at all, apart from the goal itself. Bobby Zamora, wasn't it? Yeah, Justin. Bobby Zamora. Because you beat us in the you beat us in the semi finals. And yeah, we did. Shocking I remember. Yeah, I remember. Season. Funny enough, I remember that almost as much as I probably more so than I remember the final itself for some weird reason. I think with the the final, both the one that we lost in two thousand and four and the one that we won in two thousand and five, um, I, I remember like being in and around Cardiff more so than I do the game because. It was such a new environment to me, whereas a game of football I'd seen, you know, however many games of football at that point, and they weren't particularly interesting games of football. We lost the first one one nil and won the second one one nil. It's like most player finals; they're just so cagey and so yeah. important that no neither team wants to lose more than both teams want. Yeah, to but the FA Cup final, uh, an incredible game, absolutely incredible game, and as I said, you know. So close, but just it wasn't meant to be. That It was Gerard's day. That's all you can say, really. Yeah. Strolling into our runner-up positions then. Matt, what's your second best ever game? Uh, my second best ever game wasn't a game, again, um, that we, we played particularly well with. But it's West Ham 1, Arsenal 0. Um, so a bit of backstory on this game is um, me, George, Simon and a few others had uh, gone out for the evening oh. for my birthday. Um, the game is on a Saturday uh, and we went out for the night on the Friday. I was a little bit worse for wear, I think, by the end of the evening. I think that's fair to say. We'll leave the details out, but we were a little bit worse. I was no, a little let's bit... have the detail. No, 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 let's not have the detail. But uh, on the game side of things, it was... Um, I woke up head pounding again, but... I have so many friends that are Arsenal fans. And if there's one game I want to win, it's Man United and it's Arsenal. And, um, oh, it was sweet. that And it was a Declan Rice goal. That was his first goal for the club as it well. It was the first goal for the club. He was still 19 at that point, I think. Yeah, he was. Yeah. So uh, a, a fantastic goal, a fantastic memory. And for me, it was my birthday. So it's just a lovely birthday present. Yeah, brilliant birthday. You know what's also really quite funny about that game as well is that Sammy and Nasri played for us in that game and he was yeah, the one that assisted the goal. <laughs> really? Jesus, that's going back some then, isn't it? Ooh. Yeah, no, that that was the only that was the only goal or assist he got for us. I don't even think he really played for us after that. No. We got him in on a free, because I think he got 
like no, kicked out of Marseille or something. Yeah, that whole, was it severe? Wasn't it? I think where something he had that like whole that. Where he went to, did he go to doctors or something? It's really random. Yeah, he, he he basically yeah he basically went and had a pro, like a prostitute, and his missus was outing him on Twitter, and yeah, he comes back. Plays against that, Arsenal, right? gets the assist that wins us the game, and then basically fucks off. It was ridiculous. I'm, I'm, I was happy there. Yeah, yeah, mate. No, great, great birthday treat, definitely. Because I remember that night, and I won't go into detail for how worse you, for where you were, but I remember because you'd invited your friend Temmy, and yeah. Temmy was a, Temmy's an Arsenal fan. Shout out Temmy, and he was like, chat, he mate. was like, we're gonna beat you guys. We're definitely gonna beat you guys. And <laughs> I know you were pissed at the time, but you were you were you were adamant. You were like, no, 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 no. I'm not having not on my birthday. And then and then we won. So yeah, it was a, it was a good it was a good result. That's a great message. I did like message him a lot of laughing emojis when that. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So Simon, what about you? What's your number two? My number two is another uh, Ipswich Top of the Table clash. There weren't too many of these. Uh, December 2004, Ipswich beat Wigan, Ipswich won 2 1. And to this day, the goal Leighton Bain scores in this game is the best goal I've ever seen. Yeah. It is a 40 yard thunderbolt, top corner. No keeper in the world is saving it. Yeah. He's, he's been, like he's been linked with big money moves at this point as well. Like people are starting to like look at him as being a serious left back. And if you get a chance, look it up. This goal is incredible. Like he has no right to score from there. And that was in about the 60th minute. Town equalised uh, through Richard Naylor of all people as a centre back. I mean, he didn't. He started his career centre forward, but ended up playing centre back later in his career. And then 89th minute, Darren Bent chips the goalkeeper. Town win 2-1, top at Christmas, top at New Year, and then we fall away. It's the same season of the playoffs we were just discussing. We really oh, should, have yeah. been, we should have been promoted automatically that season. I think we're one of the few teams that were top at Christmas and top at New Year that didn't go up. Yeah. Like, we were, we were playing so well. Again, it's that era of Joe Royal, great football, deserved to win the game. And, again, tinged with a bit of disappointment of that result didn't then drive us into the premiership which it should have done but it was a great game and that goal from late Bain is worth the admission fee on oh, on any day yeah. and it, you talk about the Gerald one when it goes in you're just like well there's nothing we could have done there's absolutely yeah. nothing we could have done those kind of goals are always so interesting because it's almost like Eight times out of ten, or nine times out of ten, that's in Rosette. Well, you, you kind of but go, it's that have a special go. dust. Yeah, exactly. It's that special dust on that day. Yeah. It just ends up. Yeah, you know. and I say it's top of the table clash. I think we were f- second, they were first, and we win the game and go go top. And yeah, as I say again, it. W- I wish some of these games had had more importance than they eventually ended up having. But such such is the career of a football yeah. fan. It's it's kind of the best of a bad bunch. We didn't have too many games at the right end of the table. This was one of them, and we won. So that's we'll why it's second in my list. list. My runner up, and I think these last two games, realistically, it's not going to take a genius to figure out what they're probably going to be. My number two, I've gone for the twenty twelve playoff final, West Ham two, Blackpool one. Um, just unbe- just an unbelievable day. It was it was what we needed. We'd been relegated the year before. Big Sam Allardyce comes in. We bring in Kevin Nolan, and you know, like the whole squad. Well, nearly the whole squad is kind of shaken up. And but you know, what was brilliant, I would say to a certain extent, was so- the players that did stay. I.e., the two st- uh, standout ones being Colton Cole and Mark Noble. They both took wage cuts to stay on half the wages that they'd been on in the Premier League, despite the fact that they were they were both being linked with moves to Premier League clubs. And yeah, you, you know, we for the most part of that season, we were in the automatic promotion places. Yeah. And then it was weird because after Christmas, Reading went on this outrageous run and won the championship despite before Christmas being around mid table. And we finished third, Southampton finished second. And normally the team that finishes third in the playoffs doesn't go up because they're normally, you know, demoralised at the fact that they've not secured automatic promotion. But winning the playoffs is better than automatic promotion because you get that day out at Wembley. However, obviously it comes with the risk of if you lose it, you've then got a whole other season of being in that same division again. And yeah, I just remember... 
the atmosphere was just fantastic. It was absolutely brilliant. And, you know, like the West Ham section was completely sold out. I think there were even West Ham fans in the Blackpool section of the stadium yeah. as well. The noise was just incredible. I was right on the corner flag, basically quite, you know, like just a little bit higher up than the pitch itself. And yeah, we went one nil up through Colton Cole, again, club hero. And then in the second half, Tom Ince makes it one all. And then with about 10 minutes to go, there's a bit of a scramble in the box from a Kevin Nolan ball. Vaz Tay smashes it into the roof. And we'd brought him in the January and he'd just been on fire. I really thought that he was going to go on and be good in the Premier League, which never happened. Um, he was he was probably one of those players that was maybe too good for the Championship, not good enough for the Premier League in the okay. end. But give, give, give him his dues. I mean, it, that was a bit later in his career. I mean, when he was at Bolton, he was a very fine player. Oh, I mean... Mm, I suppose it's just for I don't know so if I I, as I said like he never really got ignited in the Premier League for us and I can't really remember him for you at that point in his career this wasn't peak Kevin Nolan at that point no not Kevin Nolan Vaz Tay oh I thought you were talking about Kevin no, Nolan no no Kevin Nolan was a great Premier League player yeah no he, he scored a great he scored a lot of good goals for us in the Premier League and I feel like he doesn't get the respect he deserves from West Ham fan Kevin Nolan but you know Vaz Tay yeah, no, Vaztay is actually not wasn't that good in the championship either. But and then there was a scramble. Vaztay launches it into the net, into the roof of the net. Wembley Stadium, you know, our end of Wembley Stadium just erupts, and it was it was so good. We needed that win, and again, it's just at the end of the game, pure elation, joy, relief, relief, and and then it, funny enough, it was the same day that then I went home and watched the Chelsea Chelsea win the Champions League in ridiculous fashion. It was just a crazy it was a crazy day and yeah, brilliant. First time seeing first and only time I've actually seen West Ham at the at the new Wembley. So Yeah, so my, my memories of that game though was largely Blackpool. Blackpool were the, were the best side. Sides. They deserved to win that game when they you did. in isolation. And that's what I mean when you talk about playoffs being a lottery. That game could easily have gone the other way. There's no doubt about that. Blackpool mm. Could yeah, easily could. have won that game, and then you're looking at another kind of 40, 46 game championship season rather than a, a Premier League promotion. But yeah, obviously, I, I don't know the feeling. I wish I did, but hopefully soon. Not too long away. Hopefully soon, but yeah, no, it was it was just it was just brilliant, brilliant day out. So that was my runner up spot. So who takes your number one? Who takes your crown, Matt? We've already spoken about it. It was England oh, of course. versus Croatia. Yeah. This is Simon. So my number one, uh, George, rather let the cat out of the bag earlier in the show, uh, that 2010-11 uh, League Cup semi-final, Ipswich beat Arsenal by a goal to nil. And for the life of me, I can't believe Tamash Prishkin scored in this game because he is <laughs> absolute pony. Like, I've, we spent two million quid on him. He'd had a good goal record at Watford and he scored 10 goals in 80 appearances. He was absolutely dreadful for us. But the one moment he stands up and he's, he plays well, please, he could have got another couple in that game. We were so dominant in the first kind of 60 minutes. Like we, we'd had chances. Like that result was really deserved in the end. Obviously towards the last 20 minutes, Arsenal kind of throw the, throw the book at us. And look for the equaliser and, lo- and I think the other thing is it was pretty decent Arsenal side like Fabregas played in the game definitely I think Nasri came on uh, Chesney was in goal so so it wasn't like it was a completely they weren't playing the kids no, no. I think Carlos Vela played because he always played in the uh, League Cup didn't he yeah I'm fairly sure he was in that, that team as well um, but yeah and it was kind of quite a poignant result so I don't know if I want to say like, so my dad passed away the December before and it was kind of a result that felt like it was for him and being in the ground it was like it was just huge it was such a nice experience and thinking yeah that that one was that one was special we we don't play premier league sides often we beat them even less often <laughs> so that one was that one was a, a nice feeling and you used to talk about uh, and you used to talk about got a lot of Man United friends got a lot at that time had a lot of Arsenal friends and it's like yeah. I don't get the chance to lord it up over people with no. fucking Ipswich so <laughs> going to going to school the day after it's just like come on <laughs> hey sarah sarah the same like 
We go to Wembley. I was going to say, I, I remember you coming. I still to this day, I remember you coming into school after that result, and you honestly looked like you'd been made king of the world. <laughs> Beating from here to here, mate. But it, it, that's how it felt. I mean, unfortunately, we lost. We lost the second leg, three nil. Away at the Emirates, so that was kind of what we would have expected anyway. Um, but yeah, I was so, so proud of that that day. It was just. <laughs> Again, a, a rare occasion when the ground was completely packed, and it was. And I know I mentioned it before. Um, in terms of meeting, I met Jamie Redknapp and Paul Merton after the game as well, because they're in Sky. We were in the box next to us. Uh, it just adds yeah. to it, then, doesn't it? Yeah. So, as I say, it'd been quite a hard couple of months, and then that was that was a real bright spark. Absolutely. Yeah. No, definitely, mate. A worthy spot at number one, and my one is to no one's surprise. West Ham 3, Man United 2, the last ever game at Upton Park. And it just, it was it was everything that that game needed to be. I took the day off work to go and watch the game because I was like, you know, realistically, I'm never going to be here again, at least not from a footballing sense anyway. And uh, like, you know, I got there early and there was tons of ex-players were there. You know, I met, I met like Dean Ashton and Ludo McCloskey, obviously Trevor Morley, Tony Cotty, Tony Gow, Steve Lomas, like all these ex West Ham players that got there early and just yeah, just wandered around the ground, like feeling surreal. And it, it was one of those days where almost everything, at least from a personal standpoint, almost everything went perfectly. The West Ham Twitter were doing an interview and like they were just interviewing random fans and they were just going, oh, what do you think the score is going to be? And they were making a compilation and the guys come up to me and said, oh, do you want to give a, a prediction for the score? And I've just gone, yeah, I think we're going to win the game three, two. And then we did win the game three, two. So and it's on Twitter as well. So I was like, that'll do. I was like, that's a, that's another little high. And the game got delayed because, you know, there was the whole controversy with the Man United bus. bus and and everything yeah and keep it classy and, um, absolutely I mean it was yeah because there was just I just remember walking down the street and I'd never see like even fans that hadn't got tickets to the game were Tether. there yeah they were there the, the statue was just surrounded Green Street was a sea of people and yeah, I remember getting into the stadium and thinking, oh, you know, like, fuck me, is the game even going to go ahead now? Because it had been delayed and it did go ahead and we went 1-0 up and then in the second half, they pulled it back to 2-1 and, and I'm sat there and I'm praying. I'm like, oh, please. Like, I was like, we can't lose this game. I was like, you know, they'd knocked us out of the FA Cup quarterfinal like the month or so before. And we really should have gone through in that tie because we drew away at Old Trafford one all, and their goal was a foul. Like their equaliser was a foul. We should have won that game one nil. But and then and then but then to be fair to them, they deserved to beat us in the replay. They were they were better than us on the night, so they deserved to go to the semi final on the replay. But it should never have been a replay. And yeah, I was just thinking like, oh, we can't lose this game. It's the last game at Upton Park, and then yeah, the ball comes in. Antonio gets the equaliser first of all with about oh you know like really 15 or so minutes left to go around that area and then we get another free kick ball comes in Winston Reid and when you hear like when we did the players we wanted to meet Peter Drury was on your list Simon yeah. and when you listen to his commentary over that moment ah oh, it's just bliss and see single-handedly undoubtedly the best atmosphere I have ever experienced at a game ever it was phenomenal absolutely phenomenal and I don't think I will probably ever hear a better atmosphere again I really don't think I will I hope I do because I, I want to hear I want to hear great atmospheres every all the time but I don't think I'll ever hear a better one than that it's it's one of those once in a lifetime once in a yeah. generation sort of yeah, and it and it capped off it capped off a great season as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean it, it is a, it's not even a once in a generation I moment. Mean, you will never have a last game at another stadium. That's no. It, yeah, it once in a lifetime. Like this is 
Yeah. This is an event you'll have once. And I think it's worth pointing out that me and Matt are currently about 200 yards, 300 yards yeah. from the spot of that old stadium. Um, we can yeah. literally see it from Thank our window. Thank you for doxing Simon. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. We're roughly in that area. Oh, yeah. They, they, yeah, they can't find us. But yeah, no, you can see... Um, it's quite sad when you look at it now because it is just a, bo- a block of flats and there's I very still, little remaining. I still there. walk past the statue, though. I still walk mm. past the statue and I see the statue and I think... Well, when I could eventually come down and we can eventually go for a pint, we should go to the Bowl Inn. But I, I will say it's kind of the only reservation I have about seeing you guys is that I'm going to have to go there and the stadium's not going to be there. And I really don't know how that's going to make me feel. Since? Oh, no, I'm never. No, since since that, I'm not been. I mean, there there's since. not much here, to be fair. So yeah. It's flat. Yeah, it's just, yeah. just loads of houses. But I don't know what it's going to feel like going back there and and seeing it. I mean, you've got to you've got to uh, you've got to bite the bullet one day, mate. You can't well, escape. Yeah, this yeah. Now that you guys live there, yeah, exactly. So, yeah, that that's that'll be interesting. As I said, I don't know what my reaction will be, but you know, as I said, that. The last game at Upton Park, it was just, it, it it was everything it needed to be from as a West Ham fan, and and yeah, it capped off a great season as well. Yeah, so there's rare occasions where football goes exactly how it needed to go. Yeah, yeah, for the sake completely. of the day, and the story did yeah. what the story should do. Yeah, completely. So right, boys, then that is our list. Matt, would you like to run through your ten, please? So my number ten was Atletico Madrid for Athletic Bilbao nil. Uh, number nine, Ipswich won Gillingham nil. That was away at Priestfield. Uh, number eight, Liverpool won Chelsea one. At uh, number seven, Ipswich three, Norwich two. Number six, Ipswich won Birmingham nil. Number five, Ipswich six, Crew four. Number four, Ipswich two, Middlesbrough nil. Number three, England two, Croatia one. Uh, feels like I'm doing the that bit at the end of Sky Sports where they yeah. come through the scores. <laughs> uh, number two, Ipswich two, Wigan one, and number one, Ipswich one, Arsenal nil. Brilliant, right? And my top ten are I've got number ten, weirdly Burnley three, West Ham nil. Then at number nine, I've got Mark Noble's testimonial. I would say the score, but I have no fucking clue. There was about thirteen goals in that game, and penalties on top. Number eight, I've got England two, Croatia one. Number seven, I've got the England under twenty ones three, Italy under twenty ones three. The first ever game at the New Wembley. Number six, I've got West Ham three, Sunderland nil. April two thousand and two, my first ever game. Number five, West Ham four, Man United nil. Number four, West Ham three, Wigan two. Number three, the FA Cup final 2006, West Ham v Liverpool. And then number two, I've got the playoff final of 2012, West Ham two, Blackpool one. And then in my number one spot, I've got the very final game at Upton Park. West Ham 3, Man United 2. And your top 10, Matt? My top 10 is, uh, so when the fans invaded the pitch, when we lost 3-0 against Burnley at home, when we beat Burnley then the following year, 4-2, um, when we played West Ham in the Betway Trophy, the trophy we existed but we'll never be able to win. Um, number 7, when we lost to Astro Gugu. Uh, number 6, uh, when we went to Arsenal and got annihilated, but it was my first West Ham away experience. Um, when we beat Man United at home, when I went to Valencia versus Liverpool and Liverpool lost. Uh, number three is when West Ham played ch- against Chelsea and I was hanging out my ass. Number two is when West Ham beat Arsenal, but it was my present and I was hanging out my ass. And uh, number I one think, was yeah. when England was playing Croatia and uh, I was hanging out my ass the next day. Uh, <laughs> Lovely stuff. <laughs> A lot hanging out your ass by the sound of that, then, Matt. I, I, yeah, sorry. Matt leaving his phone in another room. Who says we're not professional on this podcast? Amen. That's the final whistle. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Mid Table and Up podcast. If you enjoy our top 10 lists, please make sure to follow us on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook. Let us know what you would have done differently. If you watch this episode on YouTube, make sure to put your foot through that subscribe button and leave a like on the video as well as follow us on Spotify, the podcast app to keep up to date with the series. Thank you very much. See you next time.